Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about Windows command line tools. Now, command line tools provide a wealth of troubleshooting information about computers and networks. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a few of them. So the first command we're going to talk about is one of the most common command line tools, which is the ping command. The ping command is a simple tool that you can use to troubleshoot networking issues, such as lag and network connectivity. So for example, you can use the ping command to see if your computer can communicate with another computer or device on your local network, or to check if your computer can communicate with another computer or device outside your network out on the internet. For example, let's say you wanted to check if your computer can communicate with another computer on your local network. So on our computer, we would open up a command prompt and then we would type the word ping along with the IP address or the name of the other computer. Then our computer will send out four data packets to that computer and then we'll wait for a response. And if the other computer received our data packets, it will send the data packets back to us as a reply. And if we received a reply, then that means that there is general network connectivity between us and the other computer. But if we did not get a reply, then this could be for several reasons. It could mean that there is no network connectivity between the two computers, such as something simple as a disconnected cable. It could also mean that the other computer is turned off. Or it could mean that the other computer is turned on, but it's blocking all ping requests. And the same thing goes if we pinged a server out on the internet. And the easiest way to do this is by pinging a website using its domain name, such as example.com. And if the reply was successful, then that means that the example.com server is up and running and that our computer can access the internet. And our next command line tool is TraceRT, which stands for Trace Route. Now the internet is a global network of routers that allows networking devices the ability to talk to each other from all over the world. And these routers communicate with each other so they can direct or route the data to their intended destination. And Traceroute is used to find out the exact path a data packet takes and to find potential problems such as bottlenecks on its way to its destination. So for example, let's go ahead and trace the route from our computer to another computer or device out on the internet. So at a command prompt, we would type TraceRT and then the IP address or domain name such as example.com and then we'll press enter then the data packet will find its way to the destination. And each time it reaches a router on its path, which is referred to as a hop, it'll report back information about that router, such as the IP address and the time it took between each hop, which is reported in milliseconds. So the trace RT utility is a great tool that can be used to pinpoint where a problem lies on a network if there's a bottleneck somewhere or if the data packet cannot reach its destination. And our next command is path ping. Now path ping combines the ping and trace route commands together. So just like trace route, path ping finds the path that a data packet takes to its destination and it also uses ping. But unlike the standard ping command, where it only pings the final destination, path ping pings each router or hop that the data packets took to the destination. So at a command prompt, you type path ping and then we'll do example.com again. So once again, it'll show us the hops that it took to example.com and the next process will take some time because it will ping each router 100 times along the path it took. And once the ping is complete, it's going to show us the statistics of the ping. So here we can see that the first three hops had no issues because 100 queries were sent and zero were lost. However, the fourth hop, eight packets were dropped out of 100. So there was a small issue there, but the rest of the path had no issues. So the path ping command gives us more detail on where a problem lies on a network. Hey guys, I want to tell you about my sponsor for this video, which is Bitdefender Total Security. Bitdefender Total Security is an award-winning security software that protects you from online threats that doesn't sacrifice the performance of your device. Bitdefender offers multi-layered real-time protection that keeps you safe from cyber attacks and blocks threats such as viruses, worms, spyware, and trojans. 
It also has ransomware remediation, which reverses any damage caused by ransomware by restoring your encrypted files. Bitdefender Total Security keeps your information private by blocking third-party data tracking and prevents unauthorized access to your webcam or microphone. And it even comes with a built-in VPN so you can surf the internet safely and anonymously. And for those of you who like to work, watch movies, or game with no interruptions, Total Security has different profiles that you can choose from. Depending on your activity, it knows when to optimize your device's performance and eliminate those annoying pop-ups. It also offers protection for five of your devices, including Android, Windows, Mac, and iOS. So to learn more on how to get full protection against digital threats and also enjoy a significant discount on Bitdefender Total Security, click the link in the description below. And our next command is nslookup. And this name is short for name server lookup. And this is used for looking up DNS information about a domain. And if you're not familiar with DNS, DNS stands for domain name system. And its job is to resolve domain names to IP addresses. So when you type in a domain name, such as example.com into a web browser, DNS will resolve that domain name into a number, which is an IP address, so you can retrieve the website. And it has to do this because computers don't understand names. They only understand numbers. And you can use NSLOOKUP if you're experiencing problems related to DNS. So for example, you can look up an IP address of a domain name if you want to. So at a command prompt, if you type in nslookup along with a domain name such as example.com, the result will give you information about the example.com domain such as the IP address. And the next command is ARP, which stands for Address Resolution Protocol. So where DNS is used to resolve IP addresses to domain names, ARP is used to resolve IP addresses to MAC addresses. In order for a computer to communicate with another computer or device, it needs to know the MAC address of that computer or device. So the first thing that the computer does is check its ARP cache to see whether it already has the MAC address for that computer. In fact, we can check this ourselves at a command prompt by using the ARP command. So at a command prompt, type ARP with a minus A switch. And as you can see in the output below, it has no entries at all. So since there are no entries, if a computer wants to communicate with another computer, it will ask that computer with the corresponding IP address for its MAC address. Then once it has the MAC address, it'll store this information in its ARP cache. So let's do the same commands as before. And now you can see the IP address and matching MAC address has been added to the ARP cache. So the ARP command is a good way to manually check which IP address is associated with a certain MAC address. And now our next command is called NETSTAT, which stands for Network Statistics. Now this is a useful tool that is used to display current network connections to your computer. So in our example here, we can visually see that our computer is currently communicating with an FTP server and two HTTP web servers. And we can verify this by using the netstat command. So at a command prompt, we type netstat. And in this case, we're going to use a minus A switch. And then we'll press Enter. And in the output, we can see the two HTTP web servers and the FTP server that we're connected to. So even if you're not sure what connections your computer currently has, you can use the netstat command to find out. And in addition to connections, it also displays which ports are open and listening for a connection and the type of port that it's using, whether it's TCP or UDP. Now the host name command is rarely used, but if you're studying for an exam, such as a CompTIA Network Plus, you need to know this. The host name command simply shows the full name of your computer. So at a command prompt, if we just type host name, we can see that our computer is simply named MyPC. And the next command is ipconfig. The ipconfig command is another common tool. And this is used to display the network configuration for our computer. So if you believe you are having an issue with certain services, such as DHCP, DNS, default gateway, or just to check your IP address, you can use the ipconfig command to do this. So at a command prompt, if you type in ipconfig, and then we're going to use a forward slash all switch. 
This will display the full TCP IP configuration for our computer, such as our computer name, DHCP server, MAC address, IP address, default gateway, which is the router, DNS servers, and so on. And the next command is System File Checker. Now, whenever you get a new PC or do a fresh install of Microsoft Windows, you'll notice that the computer runs fast and smooth. But over time, some operating system files may get corrupted, causing your PC to run slower and do some strange things. System File Checker scans your operating system files and repairs them if they are corrupted. And it repairs them by using a backup copy of Windows called a system image. However, if the system image is corrupted itself, System File Checker won't be able to fix the files. So, to run it, you have to open up a command prompt and run it as an administrator. And then you would type sfc forward slash scan now. And now it's going to begin a system scan of your computer that will take a couple of minutes to complete depending upon the speed of your computer. And if System File Checker was successful in fixing the errors, you'll see a message that says it has found corrupted files and it has successfully repaired them. However, if the repair wasn't successful, you'll get a message that says it wasn't able to fix some of them. And this could be due to a problem with the system image itself. Because as I said before, that's what System File Checker uses to repair corrupted files. So the next command that we should run is the DISM command, which stands for Deployment Image Servicing and Management. Now this command line tool is used to repair the system image. So at a command prompt, type DISM forward slash online forward slash cleanup dash image forward slash restore health and let it repair the system image. And if it was able to successfully repair it, you can run system file checker again and you should get no errors. And our last command is Telnet. Now Telnet is a terminal emulation program that is used to access remote servers. And it allows you to send commands remotely. And because it only sends commands and not graphics, it's very fast. However, the drawback is that it's not secure. All commands are sent in clear text. So today, Telnet is mainly used to access devices within a local area network or to send non-sensitive information over the internet. So when you connect remotely to a server by using Telnet, you just use commands with a keyboard to tell the server what to do. So you can use those commands to run programs, create folders, delete files, create files, transfer files, browse directories, start or stop services, and so on. So pretty much you can do everything even if you're hundreds of miles away. And in addition to communicating with servers, Telnet is also used to manage and configure other network devices, such as routers and switches. Now, if you haven't done so, you have to enable the Telnet client in the Windows operating system before you can use it. So you first go to Programs and Features, and then you go to Turn Windows Features On or Off, and then from here you can just enable the Telnet client feature. And then you just open up a command prompt and then you can start some Telnet commands. Now if you want to see some interesting examples of Telnet, just type telnettelehack.com and press enter. And then type Star Wars. And then you can see an ASCII version of the movie Star Wars. Or press Ctrl C to go back to the main menu and then type Aquarium. And then you can see an ASCII version of an aquarium, which is really interesting. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video on Windows commands. And if you're interested in a more in-depth lesson on some of these commands, you can find them on my YouTube channel. And thank you for watching.